Welcome back. This is part four of how to make an iPod poster. We just used the magnetic lasso tool to select Mr. Fiesel and then we held down the shift key to add and the option key to subtract from the edges of the selection to fine tune it before we moved it over to our poster. So now that we're done with this, um, I'm going to save my selection in this file and save it in case I want to come back to it. So I'm going to come to my select menu, do save selection. I'm going to name it Fiesel Outline. It's going to become a new channel in this file. Say OK. And then I'm going to save it as Mr. Fiesel Cutout in my iPod project folder. And then we're going to close that. Now your photograph is not going to be large enough for your poster. So the first thing we need to do is enlarge Mr. Fiesel to fill up the poster. Because the point is to see the person using their iPod not the background. The background is just to enhance the theme of our advertisement. So to make one thing in its own layer larger and not touching anything else, select the layer over here in your layer panel. Go to the edit menu and say free transform. This will put a bounding box around your object. Do not drag on the side anchors. Only grab and drag on the corner. The second thing is do not pull on the corner unless you're holding down the shift key. You must keep your picture proportioned. Proportion means it doesn't get stretched out and look weird. So hold down the shift key, press and drag on the corner and start pulling out away from the center. Let go of your mouse button first so the proportion holds. And then let go of the shift key. You can move your object around if you need to. You can, re you can continue resizing. Just be sure you hold down the shift key. When you have it the size you're happy with, you press return or enter key on your keyboard to lock in your change and the bounty box will disappear. You can't do anything else until the bounding box disappears. You, when you're resizing something or what we call free transforming, you are in a mode, a mode of operation, which means nothing else can be done until you're done with that, so you've got to get out of it before you move on to anything else. Now at this point let's save as. This is our final poster. We'll save it again. It's good to save every five to ten minutes. Now we're going to add a mask to this cutout of Mr. Fizel because there's some parts we just didn't get fixed quite right. So I'm going to come over here to my layer panel and down in the bottom next to the effects button there is the layer mask button. When I click on this it will add a mask into the layer. I only need one. I only do it one time. If you want to come back and work on the mask you just click on the little picture symbol for it in the layer. If you want to do something to the picture you select the picture we're going to do something to the mask. Now what a mask does is it hides part of the picture. It does not delete it. And that's what we want to do. Ideally we should mask everything. Um, but sometimes we can cut out and it's okay. Right here on his hand, in here between his belt loop and his arm, we need to hide these white areas. <clears throat> so we're going to use a paintbrush. We're going to set our paintbrush 
to a round, soft brush. We're going to set the default colors to black and white, and we want black as the foreground color on our tool panel. Black hides the image, white reveals the image. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to zoom in on his hand. I have my mask turned on. I have my paintbrush. My foreground color is black, so therefore it's going to hide this part of the picture when I draw on top of it. So I'm pressing and dragging. Now my brush is still a little bit too fuzzy so I'm going to make my brush smaller. I don't want it to be super fuzzy like like a ghost. I just want it to be very subtly fuzzy. If it's too fuzzy it looks fake. Now we're getting a little bit of a white glow here on his arm, which I really don't like, but that's okay for now. The other area that we need to work on is right here beside his arm, so let's zoom in that. So I'm going to get in close. You've got to get in close to do this. Whoops. Oh, I just made the classic mistake. No, no, I did. I did good. All right. I thought I was painting blue, but actually I'm just hiding the pixels so you can see what's behind. I'm cutting just a little bit inside the edge of my subject so that I don't see any white glow around the edges when I'm done. If I erase something I didn't mean to by accident, I can just I can open it back up like right here. I can switch to white and I can unerase what I did. Switch to black and hide it again. Now this is the the way to mask that takes the longest but it'll give you the best results because you're up close getting exactly right but once you get the edges cut out here, there are other tools you can use to quickly hide things. For instance, the rest of this white isn't close to the edges to where I have to worry about fine tuning when I cut out. So I could come over here and use my magic wand. Click on that white and add it to my mask. I'm going to tell my computer to fill that selection in with the foreground color, which is black, and it adds it to my mask. And now I just have a little bit more left, so I'm going to get my paintbrush and just cover up that little bit that's left. So it goes really, that you can fill in large areas quickly by just selecting areas with shape selection tools or the lasso tool and just telling it to fill with the black and it'll add it into your mask. There. We got one more area down here. Need to cut it out. So I'm doing the same thing cutting just inside the edge of my object, hiding the pixels that are in the picture. I'm not erasing them, I'm just hiding them. I'm going to use my magic wand. Fill it in. And just do a little clean up there. This is going to matter later on how well you did this when you start doing your blending. 
So I do have some jaggedy edges here I'd like to fix, but I'll come back to that later. All right, this looks pretty good. Um, looks like there's an area up here on his glasses that was showing the white wall that we probably want to take out. Again, I'm using a paintbrush, foreground colors black. I've got my mask selected over here in the layer panel. So I'm masking right now, which means I'm hiding part of the picture so I can see what's behind it. Close it a little there, get rid of that. Some of these ear here. All right, let's take a look at that. There we go. That looks good. So this is uh, the end of part four of How to Make an iPod Poster.